What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we dive into some of the meta decks that have performed pretty well in the standard 2022 queue. Uh, these decks definitely are, I would say, the meta decks currently, as they just have higher win rates than a lot of the other decks that people have been experimenting with. Now, I know this is not for everybody. Not everyone wants to play the meta decks, but I do feel like this is something that, you know, needs to be talked about in some form of way. Maybe you've even already seen these decks played in another video, but I figured I'd just put them all in a list. So if you're just looking for some, you know, decently good decks, that just you know utilize a lot of good cards from the new from this limited format uh i'll have all the deck lists down in the description below but if you like the video hit that like button it definitely helps out a lot if you're new here and want to post new videos on the channel hit that subscribe button it puts a plus and plus one counter on the channel and let's just dive into the decks and let's just talk about them just wanted to give a special shout out to the channel members that you see your names here these are the people who support the channel by either clicking the join button that's down below right next to the subscribe button if you want to get your name here on this list or you can click the link in the description i do appreciate it as it does help support the channel now on with your video now none of these decks are actually in any particular order but these are definitely decks that i feel like have stuck out to be pretty decently strong decks that just perform very very well with the current cards that we do have available in the formats so if you like i said no matter which order these go in this is not because they're from worst to best these are just decks that i just chose and just kind of from where they were last created to the, the least created you know these are in the, they're in that order so the first deck up is racto sacrifice and this is actually a pretty strong deck for what it is offering it does have a lot of good tools it utilizes the treasure mechanic which if you haven't seen it prior when you know a card like goldspan dragon creates treasures it essentially uses the the tr token artifact that the you know these cards produce to you know get certain effects out of it which helps you ramp yourself up a little bit also be able to play cards that may not fit into that uh you know color scheme that you are playing as you can kind of see we are playing white a white spell in the deck for the shoulder of the scalds so we can use that treasure to play that you know card that has white mana cost even though we don't really play any white lands other than the four pathways um other than that the deck list is pretty solid you know we have a lot of good things we can sacrifice to you know play like a very strong card deadly dispute which is definitely a to be like the pretty strong output pretty strong performing black draw card currently in the format as it is one of those things you can sacrifice a spell or an artifact to uh, to, as addition to play the spell, but then you get to draw two cards and create a treasure token. So definitely a very, very strong card. It does utilize a learn board as we do have a few cards that can go into our learn board to kind of grab a particular card, depending on what the situation is. But let's just kind of go over the deck lessons. Let's kind of talk about each card. So the first card up is Eye Twitch. Like I said, it's a very, you know, it's a card that, you know, one mana, one, one flyer. Whenever it dies, it learns. Definitely a good target to use for sacrificing. Then we have Malakir Rebirth, which is another interesting card here. Um, you know, choose target creature control, use, lose two life until end of turn. That creature gains when this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control, as well as it can be played as a land. And this is kind of one of those things that we can use if our opponent's trying to target maybe like our Goldspan Dragon that we're playing or maybe one of our other creatures and we're just not ready to part with it. We can always play Rebirth on it. It will die in the process and then we'll get it back onto the battlefield which for paying up two life is definitely not too bad and if you actually target a gold span dragon with it we'll actually get a treasure token out of it which is definitely very good as well um so overall just a way to kind of save our creature possibly from getting removed by a removal spell then we have shambling gas it's another good card i think you know if you have seen a lot of decks that have been playing black they've been playing this card just because it's very versatile in what it can do it's a one mana one one uh it has two abilities the first one being uh Brave the Stench, target creature, and opponent controls get minus one, minus one to end of turn, which is definitely very good, especially especially if they're playing uh, aggro. Um, I mean, there's not really as much in, in the way of indestructible, but, you know, giving something minus one, minus one is definitely a lot better than pinging it for one damage if it has some sort of way to get indestructible. And the other thing is search the body, create a treasure token. So just, you know, a way to kind of ramp up if we do have to, you know, chump block with it and or we can use it as a sacrifice target as well for our draw spell. Then we get the Fireblade Charger. It's a one mana, one one, and as long as it has equipped as haste, which is not too important in the deck, as we're not playing any equipments. And when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So we can ping our opponent in the face. We can ping one of their creatures. Uh, yet again, just a card that has some sort of ability that when it dies, it triggers something in some sort of way. So when we do sacrifice it, if we if that's what we choose to do, we're gonna do at least something out of it when it goes to the graveyard. Then we have the Deadly Dispute, which, like I said, it's a two-mana instant speed spell that has additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice an artifact or a creature. So you can sacrifice possibly a treasure token if you don't have too many creatures, or you can sacrifice one of your creatures and then get a treasure token and draw two cards at instant speed, which, is, which to be quite honest, is very strong for it only being uncommon and being two-mana. 
Then we have Hunt for Specimens. Yet again, it's a card that produces a 1-1 one, one black green pest creature token, as well as it lets us learn, which means we get to go to our learn board. Um, but yet again, it's just creating fodder to sacrifice to, you know, these learn spells, are like our, our Deadly Dispute, or possibly even another card that's in the deck as we'll kind of get there. Uh, but definitely a very good card that just helps us you know, dig a little bit deeper, kind of, you know, maybe get an answer from our learn board, depending on what the situa situation is. And or worst case scenario, we can always discard a spell and draw a card with uh, also learn using the learn ability. They have Kallian, the Reclusive Painter. It's a two mana, one, two. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, creature treasure token. Other creatures you control enter the battlefield with additional plus one, plus one counter on them for each mana uh, from a treasure token that was cast to spend, cast uh, from them to, to on them, essentially. So as long as we pay treasure for a creature, like if we use our one treasure on our one, one, it'll come in as a two, two, which is definitely very good. But combine that with something like a gold span dragon, when we actually make our mana, our, our treasures produce two additional mana, we are we can now pay two of that mana cost for a particular creature to come on the battlefield with two additional plus one, plus one counters. And if we spend all treasure on it, it'll come into the battlefield with X amount of treasure tokens on it. And that's, you know, usually pretty good for our top end of the deck where our big creatures are, you know, you're not really going to spend more than one mana on this. So, you know, in the early game, you could possibly put, you know, the pay the treasure, get additional plus one, plus one counter on your one drops, just maybe make them a little bit more aggressive. Uh, Fireblade Charger is not terrible because if it does die from that, it will actually still shock your opponent for two damage, which is definitely very good in that sense. But overall, pretty strong card just to kind of, you know, make our creatures that much stronger. Name the Shatter Skull Smashing as a spot removal spell and or worst case scenario land spell that we can pay three life to have it come to the battlefield untapped. Um, but overall, it's a very, you know, solid spell. There is, a, there is a decent amount of aggro in the format, so it's always good to have some spot removal to kind of ping off maybe a couple of their bigger creatures by paying, you know, X, uh, if you by paying X and if X if X is six or more, you get to uh, do double the damage to those creatures that you do target, which is definitely very good. Then we have Exodus, the Orik Overlord, and also Awaken the Blood Avatar. This is actually one other good card in the deck that I do feel like it fits very well. Uh, you know, in a in a interesting scenario, you could always play the Exodus, um, and then every time you play a, a, a spell, whatever you copy or cast an instant or sorcery spell, return target on a legendary creature card from our graveyard to our hand. So uh, most of our cards, other than I think Orcus and himself are all non-legendary so we can always get back a gold span dragon we can always get back you know one of our one drops every time we cast a spell we don't have too many spells in the deck but you know it's always a good plus and then the other side is we, we essentially create uh you know we essentially create a token as uh for the awaken the blood avatar and the token's kind of like uh um can't think of the card off the top of my name, but essentially it does the same exact thing, except it doesn't have the discard effect, but it does do damage to your opponent, which is definitely very good. Um, let me know in the comments below. I, I like I'm literally drawing a blank. But the other thing that's actually very beneficial to this spell, other than it costs an eight mana and a black and a red, is that we can sacrifice any number of creatures, and a spell costs two less to cast for each sacrifice creature this way, which we do play a lot of creatures that are just fodder to use for sacrifice and abilities. And essentially what this does is just make the spell cost cheaper. So if we have three one drops on the battlefield, this essentially costs a black and a red and we sacrifice three creatures. Then we get a three, six black, red, black avatar token with haste. And whenever this creature attacks, it deals three damage to, target, to each opponent, which is definitely a very strong card. Having six toughness is definitely hard to really, you know, burn down in any sort of way. So they need some sort of direct uh, removal and or some sort of board wipe to really get rid of that creature. But overall, pretty strong card that helps, you know, put pressure on your opponent. The other thing too is that your opponent has to sacrifice creatures. So if they have creatures, this is definitely a very good card to play to let, make them make tough choices especially if they have the sacrifice a creature uh that is definitely very strong on their end then like i said we got shown on the skulls here which we can use treasure to play if we don't draw our white mana it just kind of helps us dig a little bit deeper be a little bit more aggressive in how we're digging into our deck um, on the first chapter and then the second and third chapter allows us every time we play something we're going to put a be able to target plus one plus one counters onto various things we put all in one creature we can spread them out but for two for two turns after the first chapter we're going to be able to put counters on things which is going to make us more aggressive and hopefully you know kill our opponent in that process then we have orcus prince of the undeath it's a four mana five three with fly and trample enters the battlefield choose one each creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn where you lose x life so whatever we pay for the x that's going to happen or we can you know whatever we pay for the x on the second ability is return up to x target creature cards with the total mana value x or less from your graveyard to the battlefield they gain haste until end of turn so depending on what the situation is you can always get back a bunch of one drops maybe if you are preparing to do something like you know the awaken the blood avatar after you play an exodus or you just putting pressure on your opponent is definitely very good and if you pay the x as in like treasure this thing will come out onto the battlefield as like a seven four seven or six four seven 
five, you know, something like that, depending on how much treasure you do spend it, as long as you have Kallion out of the battlefield. But overall, very good card because it's very diverse and has some sort of board wiping ability in a minus X, minus X kind of style. Though the one downfall to it is you do lose life in the process. But, it, you know, again, some more aggressive deck on the right turn, you can play this and just wipe out their whole board and then essentially, you know, have free swings back at them. And of course, like I said, Goldspan Dragon is kind of like another key card in the deck as it makes all our treasure tokens that much stronger, which synergizes very well with Kallion just because, you know, the two mana we're, we're sacrificing from this treasure now we will put two counters on a creature that, you know, if we pay two or more for that, for them, um, which is definitely very good. And every time he becomes targeted, uh, we get to create a treasure token, which is also very good as well if our opponent tries to directly remove it. Then the mana base is pretty straightforward. It is playing 24 lands, you know, four swamps, four mountains, four of the black white pathways, four of the red black pathways, and four of the white red pathways. So overall, pretty decent 60 card deck. You can kind of, you know, maybe move things around depending on what you like what you don't like um like i said it actually is 28 lands if you count the two uh modal lands here and two modal lands there and then this learn board for the most part is just kind of to help us fix our mana and some of that and also some spot removal as well so we have environmental sciences we have two necrotic fumes we have one start from scratch two pest summonings and one a mascot exposition if we just have a ton of mana we just don't really know what to do with but overall it's a pretty fun deck it definitely is one of those ones that grinds your opponent down to the point that they're just going to break probably after you know some sort of big thing happens um, and it can produce a lot of treasures once it really starts to get going so this next deck on the list is definitely a deck that's really trying to grind your opponent down by playing a bunch of spells that really control the matchup as a whole. In the early game, we're really just start, really trying to slow down our opponent by playing a lot of remove spells, a lot of disruption spells that really doesn't don't allow them to cast their spells. And then in the end game, we're just trying to play our, our planeswalkers really as the finishers of the game as a whole. Um, it is definitely a deck that's not for everybody because not everyone loves control. It is a deck that can make games go very long because it does it does sometimes take a little bit of time to build up your side of the board. It in order to kind of dominate your opponent uh, but other than that you know the deck is very good it does what it needs to do in order to get the job done um, and it does really you know counter uh, aggro decks for the most part which you know typically in a lot of newer formats aggro decks are the bigger you know the bigger decks in the format especially in best of one just because they're a little bit more aggressive and they do win games pretty quickly but other than that you know the deck is pretty straightforward with what spells it does have in it we have you know two copies of draw a disruption as a modal land and also a counter spell which is definitely very good in the early game our opponent may try to you know spend all their mana on one spell we can counter it by you know making them pay additional one that they don't have uh then you got negate which you know stops any sort of non-creature spells which is also very good especially if you get matched up against other control Flunk, I think, is kind of like the better of right now all the two mana removal spells uh, currently in the format, just because, you know, as you get later in the game, if your opponent doesn't have a lot of card draw, their hand's very low. Given something minus X minus X based on uh, X minus seven, or seven, where X is seven minus the number of cards in that creature's controller's hand. So it's definitely a very good, strong spell that gets rid of a lot of things, especially things that may have been indestructible in some sort of way. Um, but overall, pretty decent removal spell out of all the two mana removal. Then we have Divided by Zero, which is kind of another interesting card here. We It does have Learn, which we can go to our Learn board, depending on what the situation is. But it's kind of like one of those interesting things that we can bounce something back on our opponent's side with a mana value one or greater, and or we can bounce their spell back to their hand, making them have to recast it, which in some situations, your opponent may cast something and may only have, you know, eight mana, but it costs six mana they have to then recast it on their following turn and have to leave that two mana open for whatever else um so it's yet again another decent spell that kind of slows down your opponent on what they're doing then we have Sala coming yet again a very strong counter spell it's like the counter spell if you're going to play counters uh in the format it, you can foretell it for two mana and then play it later for two mana uh or you can just play it straight up for three mana and depending on what the situation is uh, then we have Poison the Cup uh, it's kind of one of those things that I do feel like it's you know what fence you're on when it comes to you know removal um it's an okay removal i would say it does cost three straight up but if you can foretell it and set up for a late game you know later down the road removal for two mana it can be very good as it can destroy any target creature if it was if it was foretold you scry to but the only downfall is it kind of only do, you know those creatures um you know as there's a lot more mana that's a little bit more diverse that can target things that are just not creatures can target you know planeswalkers or non-land permanents or things like that depending on what it is so you know it's it's a decent removal spell but it's not a great removal spell just because you know a lot of times you may be in a weird situation and want to foretell it but it then you know after foretelling it and paying the foretell cost it costs a little bit more which you know to each their own when it comes to that kind of thing Behold the Behold the Multiverse, which is a very strong card. You can, it's a four mana instant speed spell that scries two and draws two cards. You can four tell it for two and then play it for two mana later down the road, which is also very good. Um, getting a two mana draw two later down the road is definitely strong, a very strong play as you know you get to set up you know you know the next two cards you draw. 
um, and then you get two cards right off the bat from it, which is also pretty awesome. Um, you know, having a good draw mechanic in like a deck like this and making sure you draw your answers for whatever your opponent's plan is definitely very good and something you're really, 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 really looking for. Then you have Baleful Master, which is another interesting card here. Um, as though it is a four mana kind of removal spell because, you know, it, you can pay for cheaper, but the cheaper thing makes your opponent draw a card so it's each their own do you want your opponent to draw a card or are you just going to play a straight up four mana removal spell but essentially the card ex exiles target creature or planeswalker at instant speed um so i guess depending on what the game situation is and what your opponent's playing maybe it's not the worst thing if they draw a card depending on where they are especially if you're ahead in the game allowing them to draw one one extra card is not really going to you know turn the game in their favor but you know overall pretty decent definitely very uh versatile uh removal spell just because it can cost cheaper in case you do need it I think about Crippling Fear, um, it was just definitely another interesting board wipe style uh, ability. It's a four mana uh, spell. We get to choose a creature type. Creatures of that that aren't that, of that chosen type get minus three, minus three in dead turn. We're not really playing too many creatures in the deck, so we're not really worried about you know choosing a particular creature type. So you can just choose whatever your opponent's not playing, uh, unless they're playing tribal. You know, you just choose anything but the tribe they're playing. Um, if they're playing a little bit of everything, just choose some obscure creature that your opponent's definitely not playing. Let's just say you know like you know, a TOG or something like that. Their opponent's not playing a TOG because I don't think there are any legal TOGs in standard. Uh, it's just, you know, one of those things that you just give, you know, the board essentially minus three, minus three. It doesn't kill everything just because if you, your opponent does have bigger creatures, minus three, minus three is not going to be enough, but it's good enough against those more aggressive aggro decks to play a lot of smaller things, especially like Mono White currently has pl has plays a lot of little small things and giving a minus three, minus three is definitely very good. We have Graven Lore, which is definitely a very big draw spell, and because we are playing Snow Mana in this deck, we get to do Scry X, where X is the amount of Snow Mana spent to cast a spell. So if you can, you know, Scry for five, you know, Snow, we can Scry five, get three cards we like, then draw those three cards at instant speed at the end of our opponent's turn. Or worst case scenario, we get to maybe put throw four bad ones on the bottom beneath, get like one of them, put it, keep that one on top, and then draw two random ones behind it. But just a very strong, you know, fills our hand back up, kind of picks and chooses what cards we do draw, which is definitely very good as well. Shadow's Verdict, just because, yet again, the aggro is one of those decks that are currently, you know, always is one of those things that are always at the top end of the, you know, the meta when it comes to, you know, you know, new standards and things like that. So definitely having some sort of exile, all creatures and planeswalkers of mana value three or less from the battlefield and all creatures and planeswalker cards with mana value three or less from all graveyards is definitely very good. Definitely will set your opponent back, you know, especially if they are just playing a very aggro aggressive deck that's just very low to the ground. Uh, a lot of things, like I said, mono white is one of them. Uh, if your opponent's playing like mono red goblins, that's another one that is definitely affected by this card very, very big. And, you know, there's some other decks that, you know, probably play a little bit more aggressive, maybe Gruel or something like that definitely will be highly impacted by this card like the dead one downfall just like the crippling fear mana value three or less is not the greatest especially if opponents playing big things um but you know it hits a lot of things currently in the meta they have mordekin which is a six mana five uh loyalty planeswalker with three abilities plus two draw two cards and put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library so it's kind of like you draw two and then get to in a weird way like scry afterwards so it's like a weird scry brainstorm kind of effect where, but instead of putting it on top you put it on the bottom which is definitely very good so you don't draw immediately the following turn uh you can minus two create a bull, uh, blue dog illusion token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to twice the number of cards in your hand so this creature will get bigger yet again one of our things that could possibly finish off the game just by himself especially if you have a lot of cards in hand and then we get to minus 10 and exchange our hand with our library and then shuffle uh and then shuffle you get an emblem that you have no maximum hand size so a very interesting card uh the minus 10 is not one of the things we're looking for but the draw two and also creating a dog illusion is definitely very good especially because our deck doesn't really have too many in the ways of creatures so i'm in a way to really play our creatures our play are, you know, draw more cards and also get a big creature just from not really playing creatures is definitely very good out of this card. Then we have Blood on the Snow, which is a very good just overall board way, but currently in the format, you know, six mana, you get to destroy all creatures, destroy all planeswalkers, choose one of choose one of them, and then return a creature or planeswalker with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of snow spent to cast a spell. So depending on how much snow we pay, which our deck is all mostly snow lands, uh, we are going to be able to return something that is mana value usually six or less, um, which then targets one of our planeswalkers, which is definitely very, very good. Um, it's just, you know, it's one of those things that is definitely very good for black to have as a, just a global board wipe as, you know, it doesn't have access to some things that maybe mono white has, but, you know, Blood and Snow is definitely very good, though it does cost a little bit more. I do like the effect and getting, the, you know, something back in return, even if you wipe the board completely is definitely very strong. Then, of course, we have Professor Onyx. It, I don't think it would be a Demir deck without Professor in it. She's a very strong card in the sense that her Magecraft ability is very good, especially in this style deck where we play a lot of non 
uh, creature spells, so we're going to trigger her mage craft quite often whenever we do have her on the battlefield. And plus one, we can lose a life. We can look top three cards of our library to put one of them into our hand, the rest of them to our graveyard. So definitely like a draw a card, but you know, pay, lose a life in the process, but can choose the card we do draw. Minus three, each opponent sacrifices a creature with greatest power among the uh, creatures that player controls. So they just, you know, sacrifice their largest casting creature. And then minus eight, each opponent just may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this process six more times. So they, they do that process seven times, which if they have a full hand, they discard the whole hand. If they don't have a full hand and they have like two cards in hand, they discard two cards and then they lose three life times five. So they lose 15 life. Um, so overall, very good card. And especially if we can grind our opponent down and can possibly pull off this ultimate, it definitely will finish the game on its own. And the mana base, because it's a control deck, does play a lot more mana than a typical regular deck. We have three hit a hall of the Storm Giants. We have three, uh, five of the stone, snow-covered islands, nine of the snow-covered swamps, four pathways, which is our only non-snow land in the deck, and we have four of the ice tunnels. Um, but overall, very solid 60-card deck, and I do believe this land count comes out to like 26, I think. 25, plus I think there's one one or two model modal cards or maybe there's not maybe i'm just mis misinterpreting maybe i'm thinking of a different deck but then we do have the learn board which is definitely very good we have two one environment sciences one teachings one pass summon and one elemental summon and one mascot one confront the past and one fractal summon in just to kind of create you know whatever the situation is a lot of this in the sideboard is what's going to help us win the game as well especially because we don't play creatures so these non-creature spells that like make creatures is really the spells that are going to help really help us win the game in that process but overall very fun deck very controlly deck if that's something you're looking forward to this is definitely a very good deck in the current format now i feel like every year we do have rotation um i feel like mono green kind of you know rises to the top as being one of the decks that is dead very dominant just because a lot of large creatures are very hard to deal with and that's what mono green stomps really tries to do we play a lot of big things in the deck that just try to overwhelm your opponent with just like holy crap i have to get rid of a 3-3 three, three. i have to get rid of a 4-4 four, four, you know for for three or two mana depending on what the situation is and the combination of some of the newer fight spells that are currently in the format is definitely very good as well as a uh, new card from uh adventures to the forgotten realms the ranger class which also makes it very tempo we very strong just in the sense that you know if we can get to, it to level two we're now every time we attack we're putting plus one plus one counters on whatever one one of our attacking creatures which definitely can overwhelm your opponent and definitely make some you know, have to deal with this and or the creature very, very quickly to make us lose our tempo in that sense. But overall, the deck is pretty solid. It does, like I said, play a decent amount of the new cards, plays a decent amount of some cards that have been around in the format as a whole. It is also a snow deck just because I think snow is decently strong currently in the way um, just because there's a lot of things that do things as long as we have snow permanence out, which the first card we do have in our deck is Blizzard Brawl. It's one of those things that choose our creature we don't control and one creature we do control you can if you control three or more snow permanents the target creature we control gets plus one plus zero and indestructible then in turn and then those creatures fight each other so it's like a fight spell and then on top of it makes our one creature that much stronger and also gives it indestructible which at some point you know depending on what the size of the creature is your opponent either has to chump that creature that's even indestructible regardless of whatever toughness it has and they have to do something against it which is definitely very very good then we have just Spara Sentinel. It's a very another. It's another very strong card, just because you know it has reach. Um, we can tap it and untap and untap creature we control it and add one man of any color, which is definitely very good. So it's a little bit of a ramp uh, spell as well. Then we have Snakeskin Veil, which can protect one of our creatures depending on what the situation is. Maybe your opponent has a deck removal spell. Maybe your opponent has some sort of combat trick or something. You can Snakeskin Veil our creature, catch them off guard, giving our creature hex proof so they can't target with any other spells unless they have another one that targets it before this spell resolves. Other than that, it's definitely very good in this deck. Then we have Swarm Shambler, which is another very strong card. It's a one mana zero zero, but comes in the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. And whenever a creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it becomes target of a spell or ability, put controls. Our spell and opponent controls, I just say, not ability. Uh, we get a 1 1 green insect creature token, which definitely very good. You know, getting wide on our opponent is always very good. And for one mana, and we can tap it, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on Swarm Chambler, making it get bigger. Then the two mana spot, we have the Ranger class, which, like I said, is a very strong card, especially for green. For two mana, we get a 2 2 token initially when it comes out into the battlefield. If we spend two more mana, we get to level it up to level two. Whenever we attack, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature. And the level three for four mana, we get to look at the top card of our library at any time. We cast a creature to spells from the top of our library, which is definitely very good, especially if you're not really drawing creature spells. We can cast anything that pops up on the top of our library at any time. Uh, even on our opponent's turn, though, most of our creatures don't have flash, so well, you can cast them during our turn, especially if we're not really drawn into creatures, and maybe on our draw step, we're only drawing lands or non-creature spells. Hopefully, there's a creature on top, which helps us, you know, overwhelm our opponent with a bunch of creatures on the battlefield. 
Then, then we have Tingle Florahedron. It's a two mana uh, creature that you know we can tap it for one mana. Worst case scenario, it's a modal land that we can tap it and produce green mana, but it comes on the battlefield tap. Um, it's one of those things I do think in this matchup you do if as long as your opponent's not playing too aggressively, you can probably play it as the creature and just kind of get that ramp that way, and then your opponent has to deal with it if you don't. They don't want you to ramp that heavily, but overall, pretty decent card nonetheless. Then Werewolf Pack Leader is another new card. Is a new card from uh, Adventure of Forgotten Realms. Has the ability to Pack Tactics whenever it attacks with the creatures of power six or greater. This turn, uh, we get to draw a card, which is definitely very good. Um, and then for four mana, we get to turn Werewolf Pack Leader uh, base power and toughness to a five three and gain Trample. And it isn't human, which essentially you know it turns full Werewolf, which is definitely a cool little trigger ability. But it's a three mana, a three three for two mana, which is definitely pretty awesome. Um, just because it is something that's very hard to deal with on turn three or turn two when you probably. Well, hopefully you want to play it and because Kaz do mammoth which is definitely a very awesome card it's a three mana three three that can also be a land but whenever we have a, whenever land is just about under their control because of its landfall ability it gets plus two plus two to end a turn so it makes it even stronger and definitely something that your opponent has to deal with especially if you're playing lands pretty consistently with it because they're not going to want to get hit for five over and over again as long as you know you're playing a land along with it and still a three three for three mana is definitely pretty strong they have the old growth troll. It's a three mana four four with trample. Uh, when it when it dies, if it was a creature returned to the battlefield as an or enchantment with enchant forest, enchanted forest has tap it, add two green mana, and then uh, tap one mana, tap it, sacrifice this land, create a tap four four green uh, troll warrior. So essentially, uh, it comes out as a creature. Um, you know, it's out there as long as your opponent doesn't exile it. it can, if if it dies, it goes to we can enchant our land to make an additional mana. And then when we find the time and right, we can sacrifice that land and actually get a 4 4 out of it. So it kind of comes back as a 4 4 troll again, which is definitely pretty cool in the sense that it's like a weird regenerate style ability. But it, at one point, it is a land and then it becomes a troll all over again. They have Asika's Chariot, which is another strong card I do think has seen a lot more play just because I do think. The way the removal is uh it's much a, it's a much stronger card um if you don't know what this does it comes in the battlefield we get two green we get two green cats out of it um when it attacks we get to create a copy of target token we control uh and it does have the crew ability of four which is the one thing that's pretty awesome about this card um is that we can tap anything to crew it we don't have to cap tap the cat so if we have a creature that may have come out of the battlefield after this has been played like maybe like an old gold troll we can tap the troll crew for four which the troll does by itself and then we can attack him with the chariot itself and the two cats creating more cat tokens um the other thing too is if your old gold troll is dead and we have our troll warrior token on the battlefield you see his chariot now can create a copy of that troll warrior token which is also pretty awesome then the next card up is gnarled professor it's a four mana five forward trample uh, when it dies, uh, when it enters the battlefield, we get to learn. So this deck does play a little bit of a learn board. When it's not a super focus of the deck. Um, some situations, you may just want to draw a card and discard a card. Uh, but, you know, worst case scenario, you have a learn board that have some options depending on what the situation is. But overall, pretty cool card. Decent value for four mana. Um, and also, the ability to learn is pretty awesome. And like I said, because we are playing a snow deck, we have 20 snow lands in the deck. We have two of the layer of the hydras uh pretty cool new land that's pretty much attacking land for green um tap it for green mana if it enters battlefield if we have two more other lands it enters battlefield tap but in the early game it can enter untapped uh and then the other thing too is for x and green we can have it become xx green hydra creature token that is still land and x can't be zero so at minimum it's gonna be a one one um but depending on what the situation is we can dump all our mana into it and swing in aggressively and possibly just overall opponent that way and of course, Faceless Haven is very good in standard 2022. Uh, all the lands that become creatures are actually very strong as if your opponent doesn't have any way to remove the land or the ability um, directly at instant speed, um, you know, if they don't have removal, that these lands are really hard to stop unless they have those particular cards. That is kind of pre par partially why the Faceless Haven slash book combo kind of got, you know, nerfed a little bit you know they temporarily put the book on uh you know suspension in standard 2022 just because there was no way to deal with the land after it becomes after it's not a land so like i said you know the only real way to deal with this is instant removal which not a lot of decks play a lot of um but overall very strong card you know because it's a, a four three creature that has pretty much every single creature type i believe if i'm not mistaken uh, but definitely a pretty cool um Definitely a pretty cool synergy with the deck overall. Like I said, because it does have a little bit of learn in the deck, we do have some cards in our learn board. We have basic conjuration, top six cards of our library, reveal a creature card among them, put into our hand, rest on the bottom of our library in any order. We gain three life. 
Breach to kind of get rid of artifacts and enchantments. If the art, if the mana value is two or less, get a 1-1 one, one black green pest token creature. Pest summon just in case we need some pests, just to kind of, you know, get some trump blockers. Expand anatomy if we want to attack him aggressively and gain vigilance in the process. Puts two plus one plus one counters on target creature. We gain vigilance. Introduction to Annihilation. Exile target non land permanent. Its controller draws a card. Mascot Expedition, just because if we want to just kind of overwhelm our opponent by getting wide. And Fractal Summon, if we just have a lot of mana we want to dump into one creature, we can do that as well. But like I said, we really only have the learn board just because we have one card that has learn. Other than that, most of the deck is kind of what is going to be eating down your opponent. And the overall curve is definitely not too expensive coming in at four as being the highest, but most of the deck being at the two to three drop slot. So as long as we can kind of tempo our opponent, we're definitely very in a very good position. This is definitely a deck that once it gets going, it's definitely hard to deal with just because Swarm Shambler plus plus one plus one counters makes it hard for your opponent to really directly remove stuff because we're still going to get a creature token out of the whole process. With that being said, let's move on to the next deck. Now here's a deck that's definitely very interesting. I do think this is definitely a deck that's probably gotten stronger um, just because of the lack, you know, the removal of, you know, uh, Throne of Eldraine and Ikoria, and that is Prismari Tempo. This is definitely a deck that's been popped up in, you know, this regular standard before, you know, the uh, Adventure of Forgotten Realms in Standard 22 was a thing. But I, like I said, because, you know, we, we do have less, you know, spells that are very good um, in the format. Um, this deck definitely takes advantage of that by playing a lot of good things, a lot of big expensive things. It is probably, out of all the decks, the one that has the most mythics in it, just because All Runs Epiphany, Goldspan Dragons, uh, Imrith, Desert Doom, Galazeth Prismari. These are some very, you know, very expensive cards in general in physical and digital magic, just because, you know, mythic uh, wild cards aren't, you know, very common. But other than that, you know, the deck is very straightforward in what it wants to do. You know, it wants to kind of keep the board clean in the early game, kind of dig a little bit deeper to find maybe what we're looking for, and then try to really play just our big dragons and go with some extra turns and just overwhelm your opponent that way. Um, it has a little bit of control aspects in it. It does, definitely has some disruption in it. You know, it has the Spain's full strokes, has Saul Cummins, has the Heated Debate as another very interesting deal for damage to target creature or Planeswalker. The hold to dig a little bit deeper. We have Expressive Iteration to, you know, kind of dig a little bit deeper as well. But let's just go through card by card so I'm not overwhelming with all these cards, you know, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, so the first card up is Frostbite. It's a strong card in a snow deck uh, that plays red mana. Um, you know, if we have if, uh, it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker, if we control three or more snow permanents, it deals three damage instead. Just a very solid spot removal spell for one mana. The Sainful Stroke is a very strong counter spell, as there's a lot of decks in the format that just like to play really, really big things. Having a two mana counter target spell with mana value four or greater is definitely very good, especially against the mirror matchup. Uh, we have Dragon's Fire, which is definitely very good in this deck, as our creatures in the deck are dragons. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things if you know, if we don't have a dragon, we still do three damage to target creature or planeswalker. If we reveal the dragon or chose a dragon uh, as we cast a spell, it deals damage equal to its power to target a uh, creature in. Uh, to that creature or card instead, which is definitely very good. So it's a little, it's a little diverse of a you know a spell, but you know still three damage for two mana is definitely very good as well. Then we get Expressive Iteration. It's a two mana uh, spell that we look at the top three cards of our library, put one of them to our hand, one into our library, and one into our exile. This is one of those spells I do think I've seen a lot of people play wrong. This is one of those spells that you probably want to do like before you play your land for the turn because the idea here is you want to get. You don't want to have the card in exile just be wasted unless it's something you really just don't need to play like maybe your opponents will play a lot of uh creatures so putting a frostbite is not the worst thing there but it's one of those things you want to get the the most value out of it, playing the thing in the exile play the thing in that's in your hand and you know put in a card that you really don't need or can't play into your into your library um so definitely a very interesting card that i do think that with the right uh practice and timing you can definitely you know take a real good advantage of this card in general I think the Shadow Scroll Smashing, yet again, a very strong spot removal spell. And I think in this situation, it's, you know, mostly a land than, you know, occasionally the spot removal uh, Shadow Scroll Smashing side of the spell, just depending on what the situation is, um, just because it's only a one of. So it's definitely, depending on what the situation is, you're going to probably more than likely play it as land, but worst case scenario, you could always play it as the other side. Saw so coming is definitely very good as it protects our, you know, Goldspan Dragon because we can foretell it early. And then when we have a Goldspan Dragon out, if our opponent targets it with a removal spell, we'll get a token, a treasure token that we can sacrifice for two mana, then play the Saw coming. Then Heated Debate, it's a very strong spell. It can't be countered. It deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. So we can take out a lot of things in the format currently. And it's three mana, which is definitely very good. And the idea that it can't be countered is definitely very good against a matchup that also maybe either mirrored or in a, another control deck that could play counters. Having a uh, way to point four damage at, you know, something your opponent has is definitely very good. 
Bold the Multiverse, just a very strong, versatile, you know, draw two, scry two kind of card. Foretelling it for, to make it cheaper later is always very good too. Uh, it definitely could throw your opponent off by foretelling this card and they may think you have a counter spell. So it's definitely one of those things that like, you know, you can kind of just mask a possible, you know, you know, kind of bluff a counter even though it's just a draw card. So definitely a pretty cool card that kind of synergizes very well with what you're trying to do here. We have Galazeth versus Mari, which is another card that's very good from Strixhaven. It's, I think, the only dragon that's really played currently from Strixhaven, as it is a 4-mana 3-4. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, creature treasure token, artifacts we control have tap, add 1 mana of any color, and spend this mana to cast an instant or sorcery spell. Um, so essentially, it turns our treasures into being able to be sacrificed. We can tap them now for mana, and they don't get sacrificed. And we can cast our non-creature spells with those, uh, which is definitely pretty awesome, as it kind of, you know, utilizes these artifacts much, you know, much a little bit keeps them around a little bit longer which is definitely very good for something like goldspan dragon then we have Imareth desert doom it's a five mana five five of flying um as as long as it's untapped it has forward four which is definitely you know very strong in the sense that your opponent may it needs to convert put like a lot of their mana into directly targeting the spell or they need some sort of board wipe and then whenever it deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card if we have fewer than three cards in hand we draw cards equal to the difference so if we have one card we get to draw two more cards so it's definitely very good as it kind of helps fill our hand back up that much more bolt span dragon uh you're probably going to see this card and get sick of it by the end of you know the wait until the end of it rotates out uh, but it's a five mana five, uh, four four flying in haste so whenever it attacks becomes target a spell create a treasure token now treasures can be sacrificed for two mana instead of one mana which is definitely makes them much stronger which allows us to you know keep a lot of things open and of course, we have all runs epiphany to kind of round it out as this will allow us to, you know, take extra turns, create bird tokens out of it, which, you know, depending on what the situation is, we can chain maybe two of these in a row and essentially finish our opponent in those three turns. And then at some point, usually your opponent scoops when they know you have multiples of these coming, especially if they're already low at life. Uh, mana base is pretty straightforward. We have six of the snow covered islands, uh, eight of the mountains. Four of the red blue pathways, four of the volatile fords, and three of the faceless havens, which is also very good because it works with the snow synergy. Um, you know, it can attack in and be able to be used for mana later. And this deck does have does not have any learn spells, so it's definitely you know one of those decks that you know doesn't utilize learn. It utilizes only the cards that are in the deck. But yet again, it's a, definitely a deck card or deck that, that is something to be dealt with. Though if they're not drawing the right cards, it can be a deck that's easily beaten. So it's it's one of those things that is, as long as the tempo is there, it's definitely a very strong deck that it's hard to stop. Now, this last deck up on the list is definitely a deck that, you know, is it's not the same it used to be, but it is a deck that is still very strong regardless of cards being rotated out. And this mono white aggro. Um, it's, it's a strong deck that utilizes us playing multiple spells in a turn. It, overall, the curve is on the lower end for the most part. So the idea here is we're just trying to put multi-spell multiple turns, get wide on our opponent, and just deal damage that way. Uh, we have the one mana, one one cleric that when it enters the battlefield, get to, if it was the second, if it was the second spell we cast this turn, we get to put a one one uh, counter on target creature, either itself or another creature on the battlefield, which is also very good. Monk of the Open Hand is another card here. It's got Flurry of Blows whenever we cast a second spell each turn. We get to put a plus one plus one counter on Monk of the Open Hand so it gets stronger whenever we multi spell uh, on our turn. Then we got Paladin class, this is a one mana enchantment class, spells your opponents cast during your turn, cost one more to tech cast, so essentially taxes our opponent's spells, which you know helps us with their removal. Uh, th we can level it up for three mana creatures we control have plus one plus one, which is an anthem attack, making them much stronger. And then for five mana, we can whenever we attack on a turn, target attacking creature gets plus one plus one for each other attacking creature. And again, double strike, so it's kind of like the finisher of um, the the class, and it makes our one creature that we're attacking in that much stronger, and definitely has to be blocked, or they're going to probably more than likely be dead. We have Portable Hole as a good spot removal spell. If their opponent has tokens or something we just want to get out of the way, we can play the one mana, exile target, not only permanent, and opponent controls the mana value two or less until it leaves the battlefield. Uh, we have Usher of the Fallen as a one mana two one, uh, very strong card. You know, it's a one mana two one, which is pretty good. And then on top of it, if we're not really drawing too much in the way of creatures, but we want to, you know, create more threats and get wide, we can always create. Or two, we can boast after we attack and create one one white human soldier tokens. Uh, we have Clarion Spirit as one of those things that benefits us multi spelling on a turn. Whenever we cast our second spell, we get to create a one one white spirit creature token with flying. It's a two mana two two, so it's, even itself is pretty strong. We have Kabir Takedown, which is a pretty strong card in this deck as well, just because it is one of those things that benefits us from us going wide. It deals damage equal to the number of creatures we control to target creature or planeswalker, which is definitely a very good spot removal spell. And then the worst case scenario, we can always just play it as a land that comes in the battlefield tapped and produces white mana. 
Uh, we have Luminarch Aspirant, which is another strong spell for the deck because it puts plus one plus counters at the beginning of our combat on any creature we control, which makes it much you know harder or much trickier for our opponent to block. We can even put counters on itself, which is also very good. We have Elite Spellbinder, which I do think is one of those cards that, yet again, it will be very annoying to play against, but it's a very strong card in what it does for 3 mana. It's a 3 mana, 3 1 flyer. Uh, when it's just a battlefield, look at the opponent's hand, you may exile a non card from it. As long as that card remains exiled, uh, the owner must, uh, its owner must play, may play it. Its spell cast this way make, is, is going to cost 2 more to cast. So you get rid of a pesky removal, you get rid of a pesky big spell. Maybe they have their Cold Span Dragon, you slow that up. Uh, delaying it two more turns because they have to play two more mana in order to cast it. Just an overall good card that disrupts maybe what your opponent was trying to do on their turn. Um, even in the, not in this deck and any other deck that is going to play, it's definitely a card that is going to help you you know, take advantage of what your opponent's doing and slow down what they're doing. Then we have Redain, God of the Worthy, and the, yeah. Valakuma Protective Shield. Uh, Redain is very strong here. As you kind of see, there's a lot of decks that utilize the snow mechanic and snow lands that your opponent's control into the battlefield tap, which the slowdowns even their basic. So they're basic snow lands into the battlefield tap and non-creature spells your opponent's cast that cost more than four mana, cost two more to cast. So it slowdowns a lot of your control matchups as a lot of your control matchups are playing big spells as well. So making those big spells cost two additional mana is definitely very, very uh, you know strong. And on top of it's a three mana, Three mana flyer vigilance with that's a two three which can also attack and still be hold, held back by blockers and in matchups where maybe it's not as good we can play it as its reverse side for four mana if in a source an opponent would deal damage to a permit you control or uh permit or you it deals uh, prevent one of that damage and whenever another permanent you control becomes target of a spell or ability uh, counter that spell or ability unless the control pays additional one so it taxes what your opponent's trying to do so if you're trying to spot removal something or um you know target that creature it they have to pay additional one or it gets countered so it's like it's like a built-in ward kind of ability which is definitely pretty cool they have skyclave apparition yet again a very strong you know three mana spell that can you know exile target you know not only permanent opponent control that that we that your opponent controls uh that's mana value for or less when it leaves the battlefield you get a xx blue illusion uh creature where x is mana value exalted card so the one downfall is their opponent will get a creature back eventually, but if we're able to protect the Sky Clay by making it bigger by Luminarch, or have things that just tax our opponent, you know, tax our opponent's spells, um, it's definitely you know much stronger, uh, so much easier to protect. But overall, it's a very strong card that definitely can swing the tempo of a game just by you know exile maybe a key spell that your opponent is trying to play. If you're playing a mirror matchup, you can maybe get rid of your opponent's Plowed in class or maybe one of their you know big creatures that they may have put a bunch of counters on. But overall, pretty strong card nonetheless. And the last card in the deck that is not uh, land is a Legion Angel. It's a four mana, four three flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a card you own named Legion Angel from outside the game, put into our hand. And that's the only cards in our cyber, which are three other copies of Legion Angel. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward. It's a very inexpensive mana base. We're only playing 22 lands. So we have 18 snow cover planes and we have two face our four faceless havens i guess it's 24 lands because we also have the two kybera takedowns but the goal here is to play your play your lands and keep the kybera takedowns in case of those body removal situations unless your opponent's playing non-creatures uh but overall pretty strong deck this is yet again a deck that's very good on the play um it can overwhelm your opponent pretty quickly as long as you get certain things triggering uh but overall very strong deck uh that hasn't really lost a step even with rotation happening but, you know, with that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit that like button. It definitely helps out a lot. You know, let me know in the comments below which maybe of these decks is something you may be already playing or maybe you're interested in playing in uh, Arena. And if you're new here, want to post new videos on the channel, hit that subscribe button. It definitely helps out a lot. And until next time, I'll see you later.